Okay, so the other, uh, you know, the other big area, speaking of speed, was, was, was G5X. Um, you know, I mentioned that GDR5 came out in, in 2009. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that's seven years ago now, or, yeah, seven years, yep. Um, and ever since then, you know, we've been thinking about, you know, what is next? Um, is anything next? Is it possible, right? I mean, you know, I think back then, you, I mean, you, you have to ask, <laughs> is it even possible to run, run this fast? You know, you know, Jensen mentioned yesterday, you know, you know 10, 10 gigabits per second or 10 gigahertz, it, it basically light travels about one inch in that amount of time, right? And you know, this, this picture on the right, is, is this, this is a scope shot basically capturing signals transitioning, right? So what you see, it, and it's, it's an accumulated shot of like thousands and thousands. That's why you see both top and bottom, right? So if you, if, if we were triggering and you were sending a one, what you'd see is that green, you know, that would be a line that would kind of go up to high voltage and then drop down again. But another cycle, you were sending a zero, so you'd see it toggling down to a zero again. Um, that black eye in the middle is showing you have an eye that you can sample that data correctly, right? And the space between the middle of that eye and the end of that eye is is half of that inch, right? So basically, you've got you know, you've got kind of like half an inch of, of light, you know, opportunity to grab that bit before it's gone, and you can't you can't see it again, right? So so is it, is it even possible to build a system um, to do that? What was the question? And one of the ch other challenges here, you know, if systems you're familiar with like PCI Express, for example. Uh, people will commonly signal what's called differential signaling. So you send a signal and you send its opposite at the same time. And that way a lot of noise, you, you'll, be able, you'll be able to find a signal even if there's noise because they might move together. So the difference between those is what you're looking for. Um, GDR5 and GDR5X memory is not like that. It's single-ended signal. You're sending one signal and you've got to find, it's got to be super stable because you don't have any reference to, to compare it to. You've got to find that, that bit. So, um, so again, we're trying to think about is this possible? Um, as we worked on it, and we, we also just got better ourselves with circuit architecture, um, working with memory industry also, the folks from Micron, thank you guys, this is awesome, totally awesome job. Um, you know, we, we, we said, you know what, we think it is possible, and we're going to go for it. And that was basically one of the big decisions for, for this, this generation was to go for GDR5X. Um, we, the, we had to build a new circuit design. Just because it was possible to me, it was possible to do it with the old circuit, we had to just build a new one from scratch. So it's a couple year effort to basically rebuild, that, that picture on the left is the, is the I.O. circuit design, basically to build a circuit that was capable of you know, having bits flying at it in that, in that half inch opportunity, grabbing that bit off the wire and getting the next one. And then, of course, from there going into the core, getting that, that data at that rate coming back into the core of the ship to, to be received by whichever unit um, took it. So it was, a, it was a huge amount of work, and it was, and it was again, this is, a, this is a, an area you can imagine, an incredible craftsmanship is required here, right? You know, any one little mistake at those speeds is just not going to work. Um, but we did a great job with that design, and, and it's working really well. Um, and as Jensen showed yesterday, it's overclockable also. So that's, this, isn't, this isn't the limit. You can clock it up. Uh, the, the board team had to do a, a really careful job on their side as well. As I mentioned, this is single-ended signaling. So any via capacitance glitch you know, thing that screws that wire up, you're, you're going to be toast. So th this picture here is basically a... A little hard to see, but if you look in the upper left there, that's that's basically a 3D image of our, the package of our chip, kind of tilted a little bit, right? And then that that wire is a trace of the signal coming off of the chip, coming onto the package, coming down from the package to the board. And now you see the board here and the trace on the board, and then coming to a a, a via that's going to go to you know, those sites, kind of in the middle and the bottom there, are these other our DRAM sites. So the board team had to take every single signal and test that signal by itself to make sure that it met, it, it met the speed. And it only takes one signal with one extra via that has too much capacitance on it to, for the whole thing to not work. So the board design was, was very challenging uh, for this to get it run in front of that speed. Um, but but they, they, they got it done. So, um, so that, that was the, the second uh, you know, big area. So at the end of the day, you know, that's our results. Is we got uh, you know, 1080 seems like an appropriate time to go at 10 gigabits per second, and that's what, and, 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 and that's where we are. So we're, we're very happy about that. So, so yeah. So I think, you know, kudos to the team, kudos to the, to, to our partners also for for being able to pull this off.